This is Live Strange, and we're creating madness with madness to creation. Hey, what up, YouTube land, Spotify land, Podchaser land, Geo7 land, SoundCloud land, and all the land. This is Maddie from Madness to Creation. How are you doing? Hopefully everybody is doing fantastic given the times that we are, we are in right now. But there's a light at the end of the tunnel, you guys and gals. We're, we're going to make it. Looks like we're going to make it. Anyways, um, I wanted to bring you this incredible interview with an alternative pop artist named uh, Liv Strange. And she, re she recently released a cover of People Are Strange. Obviously, you have heard that song by the legendary American rock band The Doors. And it was produced by Leanna James, as well as The Dane. And what Liv Strange says about this is that she decided to cover People Are Strange because she's always been enamored by the oddities of the average individual, the hidden secrets and twisted mind of your next door neighbor. We are all strange in our own way, and knowing that it can either keep us connected to our personal freedom or burn in by its ghastly shadow. Liv is out of Chicago, but she is currently living in Los Angeles. And in this interview with Madness Creation, she talks about basically the meaning behind People Are Strange, her rendition, her interpretation of it, and how she incorporates uh, the theatrical and grunge elements in her music. And, and she is also uh, releasing an EP as a press time and is not yet titled. And basically, when you listen to Liv Strange, think of a mix between Lana Del Rey mixed with uh, Miley Cyrus, and I'm talking post-Wrecking Ball, post-Party in the USA, Miley Cyrus, with uh, low dashes of Danny Elfman and Nirvana. And and also, she does some modeling, and, and, and please check her out on Instagram, check her out on Facebook as well, and... We are looking forward to having future conversations with her. I got I got to tell you something right now. This was one of the more fun, engaging interviews I've ever had with someone. And and please download and check out People Are Strange. Check it out on YouTube. Check it out on Spotify. And get those algorithms going for, for her. And I want to thank you guys so much for uh, liking, commenting, and subscribing uh, to the Madness Creation Podcast, whether it's on uh, YouTube, Spotify. And please follow us on these formats. And on that note, here's our interview with Liv Strange. Take it away, Liv. Uh, Windows updates, and I'll say that again. <laughs> uh, I'll say that again for uh, my listeners here. No thanks to Windows Update uh, for the delay and stuff like that. And um, yeah, I was literally ready to get on, and then my computer decided to restart on me um, to do the updates, and it took over a half hour. Or so. Oh yeah, it I think happened. they'd have the system to where you could just set it up overnight and it just take care of it while you're sleeping and stuff. But no, yeah, it doesn't work like that. So, um, yeah, and um, just I'm excited to have you on and everything yeah, like that. Exactly. And absolutely. And um, basically, what this podcast slash interview is going to be about, uh, we cover a lot about mental health, and of course, we're going to talk about your cover that you released recently, which um. I got to say this, it, it would be absolutely difficult to cover the doors, but you nailed it. So good oh, job. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. And um, I just like the vibe that you have, like kind of the mysterious, um, it's almost ominous, I would say, ominous mm -hmm. vibe, you know, and stuff like that. So um, yes. why that song? And um, just tell me some of your other favorite songs by the doors if you want to. Oh, boy. Um, the Whiskey Bar song, for sure. Uh, I, I love that song just because it has such a quirky bounce to it and it kind of <laughs> makes me feel like an elf or a fairy hopping in a field all mischievous and stuff um, that one and then oh boy um, Riders on the Storm um, Hello I Love You uh, Light My Fire oh my god there's so many good ones there's just just Jim Morrison in general is just such a genius. Mm -hmm. And even if you don't listen to his melodies, his lyrics are just so enticing. Um, I just, everything is just so beautiful and so weird and kooky. Yeah, absolutely. And I was going to say like, um, if Robbie Krieger was listening to this uh, podcast, um, 
and say he's auditioning for front persons for the doors, what would you say to him? I'd say, go for it, man. <laughs> Give it your best shot. <laughs> yeah. yeah, definitely. You got nothing to lose. Definitely. And what I've always appreciated about, uh, whether it's the doors doing this on or you doing this on, people are strange is it kind of reminds me it's while it's different genres like the song are you familiar with 6 a.m first of all no they're a hard rock band um you've heard of nikki six of motley crew right yes. okay yes. they're a hard rock band um it's nikki six's other band but mm -hmm. he in the music video for lives of the beautiful people which you, you should check out he mm -hmm. talks about um he talks about how we can find beauty even in the most ugly things and People Are Strange has a similar connotation. Do you kind of see that in terms of that song yeah. as well? Definitely. Yeah. Um, how, do you, how do you interpret that song for People Are Strange? Um, something that I've said a lot before is just I've, I've always been enamored by just the people you see walking down the street that you think have it all together, maybe, or the, the people you think um, – just have their lives put together in such a perfect way. Um, I really feel like the human nature is so imperfect within itself that every person has one flaw or another, regardless of who you are. Like sometimes they talk about, <laughs> I think in my head, <laughs> you know, it's like you don't imagine, you know, a lot of beautiful celebrities going to the bathroom on the toilet like doing a number two because <laughs> you're just like, they're so beautiful. They're goddesses or they're gods or whatever. They're, they're on this platform and they're untouchable, but you have to think like, they're just like you and me. They do the same things. They have similar insecurities. They have similar mindsets. You don't know what their faults are or their flaws are. Right. And so just to kind of point out what the human flaw is and how nobody is perfect and how we can either hold on to that and be proud of it and, and uh, kind of accept it, or we can fight against it and fight against our true selves and stay in one spot for a while or maybe our whole lives. Um, Cause you know, I, I feel like, emotional growth is so huge. And especially now with the times that we're going through right now, it's very important to, to stay aware of how you're feeling. Um, so that's what people are strange means to me is that everybody's strange in their own way. Oh, definitely. And you, you covered a lot of ground in terms of what we talk about on this podcast. And there, as you said, there is a lot going on, like whether it's, People trying to overthrow the government, which I literally have never thought I would ever see in this country oh uh, because we've been so fortunate, you know, and the civil yeah. unrest and everything like that. And I, I'm a teacher full time by day. Oh, and, okay. And I teach, well. Yeah, I teach special needs kids. Okay, cool. And um, it just kind of makes me realize – like today, I just felt completely burned out. Like um, I didn't feel like doing anything or um, anything like that. Like how have you been taking care of yourself through uh, COVID-19 and everything like that? This. What would that be? Is that like wine or something? Or? That is wine. <laughs> I didn't know if it was like Welch's grape juice or wine. <laughs> you know, yeah, no, it's wine. Um, no, I, I mean, aside from the wine thing, I, I – it's hard. I really feel like quarantine has been really hard. And to have moments where I'm just sitting alone by myself and thinking thoughts that I don't want to think and having feelings that I don't want to feel um, has been really stressful. Um, <laughs> it's been really hard. But, you know, and, and, and as honest as I can be, you know, this helps. It really does. And I'm not condoning anybody to, to fall into the trap of alcohol or drugs or anything, oh, of course. but once, but, but, you know, once in a while I like to have a drink and just settle down and, and let my thoughts kind of go elsewhere. Cause I have so many during the day and because quarantine 
creates self-isolation. You're just with you yourself the whole day. You, you know, you can take a purse with you everywhere you go and then you can drop it off wherever you want, but you can't do that with your brain. Right. You really can't. I wish you could. I wish you could be like, <laughs> I, I don't want to think this anymore. Let me just put my brain over here for a minute. No, oh, okay. I can relax. That's not how it works. <laughs> so I feel like during this quarantine time, I've been super desperate to find a way for me to find some inner peace maybe in some healthy ways, maybe in some not so healthy ways, but you know, just trying to find a place where I can feel safe. Um, so I, I think that music has definitely done that being at home and creating and writing songs, um, reading books and then being with family. I was in Chicago for a month. That was really good for me. And oh, good for you. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's mainly what I've been up to. <laughs> right. It's um, like you, uh, you were in Chicago for a month. Are you based out of Chicago? Uh, no, I'm actually based out of Hollywood. Oh, Hollywood. Okay. I was a little bit confused. Like when I was doing research for this interview, like I, I saw Hollywood, I saw Chicago. So I was yeah. trying to figure out which one was which. So yeah. um, why the, why the relocation to Hollywood? Um, the obvious. <laughs> I, yeah, I was in a not so great label deal in Chicago uh, with a boutique label for a while. And I, oh, okay. I think maybe four and a half, maybe four years I was with them. No released music. I had worked on probably over a hundred songs. Um, and I got into a really depressive, anxious state. Um, and I've been dealing with anxiety ever since I was a child, maybe since the third grade, even maybe before then. So I was more susceptible to, um, you know, the, the things that were kind of heading my way as far as the negativity went. Sure. Uh, so after I got out of that deal, I didn't have anything to do. I didn't have anywhere to go. I didn't need to be anywhere. And that was scary because here I was making all this music and then it just came to a straight halt. Wow. And I'm like, what am I doing with my life? Where am I going? <laughs> and I knew I had always wanted to go to LA because my dream ever since I was a little girl was to be a musician, to be a rock star. And so I was like, just freaking move to LA as much as you don't want to stray away from your parents. Cause I have a very strong connection with my family. You have to do this for yourself. You really have to push past the anxiety and move over there. Right. And so my sister and my mom convinced me to move over here to Hollywood. And I ended up living with my sister for a little bit and her ex-boyfriend and they took me in and they, you know, fed me and housed me and helped me get me on me, my feet until I was ready to just do my own thing. So that's where I got to now. And now I have an apartment with my sister and I'm really happy, you know? Um, so yeah, so that's, that's how that happened as I, life kicked me in the butt and then I moved over. Yeah. I was going to say, look in the background, you have a very beautiful apartment. It looks very spacious and all that. So it ain't cheap. That's for sure. That's what I hear. I hear uh rent is pretty ridiculous out there. Oh my God. It's horrible. It's really crazy. We actually are going to move soon because it's so expensive. Are you going to stay in Hollywood then? No, we we um will probably relocate to Sherman Oaks or North Hollywood, somewhere further away from the Walk of Fame and all that. Because we're literally, I'm a block away from the Walk of Fame right now. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. So. Do, you, do you envision yourself like 20 years from now or whatever, having your own star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame? Or is, or is that like not a goal for you in terms of your music? Like, what oh, is your goal? Yeah. I mean, I would love to have my star on the Hollywood walk of fame, but it hasn't been like a super big goal of mine. Right. Um, <laughs> just I, you know, I feel like as the years go by, the meaning has started starting to diminish. Um, oh, I mean, sure. look at our president right now. <laughs> like the, the president of the United States every year before this. Okay. We could speculate there were some inconsistencies throughout the presidency, but now it's like crazy. Um, now I'm just kind of like, I don't, I don't really need it. I just want to really share my music and make a change in the world. That's all I want to do. Definitely. And 
Um, so you said you had some music in the works. Yes. All right. Uh, what kind of um, like not what kind of music? Wow. Um, what mm -hmm. um, what is like your inspiration? Like when you step into the studio. Oh boy. Um, I think that visuals are my number one inspiration for um, the music I make. I don't have to hear anything. I have to see things. So for instance, I was, when I was back in Chicago, I was binge watching Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit with my dad and just watching fantasy movies like that right after I'm like super inspired to write a song. I'm like, Oh my God, I have so many ideas running through my head right now. Like just thinking about the world that I want to live in that I don't live in right now, or I maybe don't see myself living in right now. Sure. This fantasy world that I can try to transport myself to through my music, um, connecting it to those movies that I watch. So a lot of it has to do with movies and then a lot of it has to do with historical music as well. I listen to a lot of historical choir music. So like Thomas Tallis, William Byrd, a lot of English choirs because they sound very haunting yet angelic at the same time. I love the juxtaposition between darkness and bringing you to the light. That's always been my thing, which is why I'm so enamored by, by Gothic culture. I don't dress like it, but I really respect it. Definitely. And what do you respect about Gothic culture? Like, what is your favorite components of it? I feel like just, you know, the mentality is really what I connect off of is finding beauty within the darkness, because wherever you go, there's going to be darkness. Um, there's always something that's happening that, that maybe somebody's not so proud of or doesn't want to happen. And it's just the way life goes. Mm -hmm. Um, so finding light within those dark times and actually trying to twist it around and make it creative is really what brought me interested into the Gothic culture, as well as the, the visuals of it, the, the, um, clothing, the architecture, the poetry, the music even, um, and the people, um, it's just really, really intriguing. Yeah, it definitely is. And uh, do you have any working titles for your songs yet? Or Oh, yeah. We have actually a whole pretty much album ready to go. Um, and this is going to be released throughout the entire year, basically, single after single, month by month. Um, we have a total of nine songs, uh, one of which has been released already. The cover of People Are Strange. Um, so we we basically have this whole project ready to go and the, the album title is called no one's safe, which I think is pretty prominent within what we're going through right now. <laughs> it sounds very appropriate because yeah. I live in Iowa and I don't even feel safe in Iowa sometimes. <laughs> oh dude, it's crazy. Yeah. It's just wild. And, um, and naturally the one thing I miss about, uh, in this pandemic is concerts and, mm -hmm. um, obviously, you know, like, you know, everything's live streamed right now. And um, how are you going to adjust, like, promoting this album, given the pandemic we're in and all that? I mean, uh, it's probably going to be the same as if we weren't in a pandemic, to be honest. I, I, I think that just promoting ourselves online is kind of the prominent culture that we're living in right now. So that's not going to change. Um, the only thing that I do feel like, uh, is changing is, you know, the touring aspect and performing. So rather than going out to a local bar or, or venue to spread my name and get people to know me, I'm really just going to have to take advantage of social media at this point, because I can't go to those places. Many of them have closed down, uh, unfortunately. So yeah, just, uh, taking advantage of social media. I feel like TikTok is huge right now. And oh, sure. uh, I think taking advantage of TikTok probably is my number one priority. And then also I've been seriously like, I love this new app called Voisey. Um, it's where any kind of musician can go on, record their voice, record their instrument, rec 
even submit their beats and have people sing on top of them, have people play on top of them, submit their beats so people can hear their music. And you can just show what your talent is by singing on top of these beats and, and sharing your own artistry. So that's been my main focus right now is, is through that platform. Yeah. For the listeners, um, since you talked about the app, could you spell the app? Um, sure. So just in case if this would be kind of, of a free advertisement yeah. for them. <laughs> of course. Yeah. So it's Voisey. It's, it's a V as in Victor. O as in Olivia. I as in um, Isabella. Isabella. <laughs> <laughs> S E Y. So Voisey. Okay. Cause that was, cause there was a Z in there. I thought there was a Z in there, but apparently there's not. So just yeah. that way, in case of any of the listeners want to just check out the app and all that. And um, kind of one thing that Madness Creation is doing, we're actually, this is headed by me, of course. And uh, mm-hmm. I have um, a couple of therapists and other musicians that are going to help out with this project. And mm-hmm. basically how they're going to help out is the profits are going to go to National Suicide Prevention. Awesome. And, uh, and basically I'm creating a book that is, called um working title is uh lighthouses in the darkest times how musicians mm-hmm. overcome basically yeah. and i just have like um what i'm gonna do is just have like little brief bios like whether it's for up-and-coming artists or like or establish um uh, veterans in the scene is i just have like just a couple three questions and um and i would like to have you be a part of it so uh, the first question I have is, what is the soundtrack to your life? Like, is there a band, an album, or a song that helps you get through when times when times are really difficult for you? Oh, my God. That's a really good question. Um, shoot. Or it could be like a genre of music or... Yeah, you know, that that's better for me to answer. I feel like the genre of music is definitely alternative rock and grunge. I feel like Nirvana has always helped me get through my problems. Alice in Chains, Soundgarden, Stone Temple Pilots. Um, basically that period of music, just because I grew up with it and sure. it sounds so familiar to me. And I also connect with it now that I'm older and I understand the lyrics and, and the pain behind the melody and the rawness. So I really feel like 90s grunge is where it's at. It's funny that you said that because I'm almost 40 and mm. I grew up on Soundgarden and I used to like Soundgarden just because the musicianship was ridiculous. Mm. Now I listen to it and understand the pain Chris Cornell went through. And it's like, I wish he would have just called me or something. I mean, obviously I didn't know him, but I wish he would just reach out and called me or something. And I wish yeah. I could have been there to save his life and stuff. And I'll never oh, forget God. like when he died, like I literally, I was on my way to work when I heard it on the radio, I literally pulled over the side of the road. I just bawled. So did I. Did you? That's exactly what I did. Yeah. <laughs> I oh just, my God. yeah. So, uh, just going to kind of ask you a question. If Chris Cornell was here in this interview, what would you say to him? I would say thank you. Yeah. Thank you for being such a light in a dark world. Yeah. He was a beautiful person. He really was. Just like from the stories that other musicians have told me and all that. Mm -hmm. Like, do you have like a favorite like Soundgarden song or anything? Oh, God. (laughs) Um, I feel like my favorite Chris Cornell slash Soundgarden, whatever you want to call it. Probably Black Hole Sun. Oh, yeah. And then I Am the Highway. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, yeah. a lot of people don't really talk about Audio Slave as much as Soundgarden, but he had some tremendous songs on there. Yeah, Audio Slave was even just freaking just amazing. Yeah. I think for me, uh, Blow Up the Outside World would be my favorite song. Mm-hmm. Um, like, when he just lets it go in the chorus, I just literally get goosebumps everywhere. You know, it's just, wow. <laughs> And I've heard the song probably three million times. I still get the same goosebumps like I heard the first oh, yeah. song. Probably on my all-time favorite song. And um, second question I had for you in pertaining to the book is tell you, you have a right to pass. You don't have to answer this question if you don't want to. Okay. I always give people the right to pass. Uh, tell me about a time where uh, things were difficult for you and how did you overcome? Oh, boy. 
I, I, I really feel like I'm still trying to overcome right now. So I'm in the process of doing so. For sure. Um, I can definitely talk about one experience I had where I was in Romania and I was recording a bunch of songs that would potentially go on a future project. And during that time, I had been dealing with panic disorder. So I had been experiencing panic attacks every single day, almost 24 hours a day at a time. I was mentally and physically drained. I was as skinny as I could ever get. Like you Uh, couldn't eat or? Couldn't eat. I would throw up everything that I would put in my mouth. I would be repulsed by any kind of scent that that food would give off. So I would just munch on maybe crackers throughout the day. And I remember during this really, really painful, hard time, I was in the shower and I've got the, the shower head running down my back. And I'm like, what do I do? What do I do? Like, I, I'm, I can't do this anymore. And all of a sudden I just got this urge to hug myself and I felt my younger self kind of come out of my body. I felt myself as a six, seven year old who was suffering. And I put my arms around myself and I said, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry for the way I've treated you these past years. I am so sorry and I love you. And just holding myself and reassuring myself that this love is coming from me and not from somebody else, that I was okay and I had myself and I had my back, that just it gives me goosebumps to this day because um, it was such a special moment. Um, and I, I'll never forget it as long as I live. That really changed things for me. So it's showing myself the compassion that I needed. Yeah, th- this world needs more compassion. And I'm so glad that you're a compassionate and an empath too. I can tell that you're yes. compassionate and you're an empath. And um, it, is that something that you do like when you're uh, struggling or do you still go through the panic attacks or like? Yeah, I think now um, I'm going through more so anxiety attacks compared to panic attacks. Um, so rather than them just coming up randomly and escalating like from one second to another it's brought upon through moments of anxiety up until I reach that panic moment um but now I I really feel like where I get my relief from is helping other people and you know I I get on my case for this sometimes like because I love to play therapist with my friends sometimes and that's not my job that's not my responsibility I should it's not even any of my business but just to be able to be there to be a listener and to help them actually makes me feel better and I don't know if it's a selfish thing I don't know what it is um but it does make things um it puts things into perspective and it allows life to get easier So I, that's one of the things that I do to feel better is I, I make sure that the friends around me are, are know that they're safe. It's funny that you said that because I've been treating my friends and family pretty much the same way you have is sometimes I fall into the trap of not taking care of myself when I need to. And, but instead I'm looking out for everybody else. And, and now I feel like it's kind of turned around where I've had a few people in my life just say, you know, you know, Maddie, you got to take care of yourself too, you know, and, and all that. So, um, yeah. just kind of, um, like I said, this, uh, this podcast is just kind of for those that are just knowing that they can overcome and mm-hmm. stuff like that. And just wh- whether it's substance abuse, whether it's depression, whether it's anxiety, anything like that, they can, they can overcome the challenges. And, uh, what, uh, what message do you have for the listeners that, oh boy, I would say, I mean, as common as it sounds, I would say, keep going, honestly. And I would hate for somebody to say that to me when I first started trying to overcome my shit. Like, keep going, keep doing it. I'm like, shut up, like, stop. You don't have any business entering here. But now that I've gone through so much, I feel like the keep going line has really stuck with me because it does pay off. 
if you keep fighting for what you believe in and keep fighting for yourself and do things that you know are right for you and not anybody else, forget what anybody else thinks. You have to find out what, what is good for you and yourself. Then it, you're going to be better to anybody than you could ever be and yeah. to yourself. Mm-hmm. So keep going. Yeah. And I'm going to echo what Liv says, just keep going and just keep fighting for your dreams. Keep fighting for yourself. Most importantly. And, um, like, I, I hope someday that you come to Iowa or Minnesota. I would love to buy a ticket and come to a show of yours. Oh, yes. And what, um, like, uh, what, what should fans expect, um, from a live performance from you? Um, they should expect a weird fucking crazy girl on stage. Who's, (laughs) just quirky as hell um somebody who they can feel safe with i really feel like somebody they can feel safe with and and somebody who's not going to judge them somebody who just wants them to be near me i want you to come to my concerts because i want to feel connected to you because i don't feel connected to many people right now and i'm craving that human connection and that's what's most important right now, I feel like, especially in these times. Yeah. Do you know what concerts are going to be like when this is over? It's, I don't know. I'm literally going to cry at the first show I'm at. I know, right? Yeah. Um, I think they'll be social distanced for a while. And then I think, um, hopefully, crossing my fingers, that we'll just <laughs> go back to normal. I don't know if that's realistic of me to say, but I definitely think that starting off, it'll be social distanced. Um, whether that's having like little corners for however many people to stay in while they listen to the performer play or whatever. Um but moving forward, I, I really can't say I know what, what's going to happen. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, what is the, just kind of a fun question, what is the best concert you've ever attended? Or like a uh, show God. that you, oh, <laughs> there's no hesitation there. No hesitation. Ozzy Osbourne. I mean, I, he's, what, how old is he now? He's, he's over 70 probably. He's 70, Maybe. but... By rights, he should be like 200 considering all the stuff he did. Oh, yeah, I know. They've done <laughs> tests on his blood and everything. Oh, my God. <laughs> Open Air Chicago 2017, crowd surf during Iron Man. Like, my God, he was amazing. He still went out there, did his thing, despite all that he's probably going through, and just rocked the hell up. Like, who does that? And what I don't understand is, like, when he's in interviews and stuff, he can't understand a word he says, but yet when he no, says, you can't. I, I don't, I don't get it with this man. I, you know. I love it though. It's amazing. Yeah. yeah. For me, since I'm really into underground shows, um, do you like, like hardcore metal? I'm getting into it here and there. I, I, I really need somebody to show me what I should be listening to. If you, um, there's a band out of Tokyo, Japan called Crystal Lake. Mm-hmm. I saw them open for August Burns Red Mm -hmm. and they only played for about 25 minutes, but their show was life changing. Like it literally changed my life. Like, Oh yeah. There, there were the only, it's the only time I've, I've shot shows and stuff like that and covered concerts. It's the only band I've ever seen that received an encore from being in the opening band. Really? There was like a one more song chant and you know, for them, cause they just absolutely killed it. Mm-hmm. They're just insane live. What's the name? Crystal Lake. Crystal Lake. Okay. Um, a good uh, starter song for you would be called Lost It Forever. Okay. I get emotional every time I hear that song. It's just, I don't know why, but I do. You know, it's just probably because the song's all about overcoming and, you know, getting through your obstacles and stuff like that. So mm-hmm. it's a really positive song. And yet the beat is just, it's not of this world, I swear. Oh, oh, yeah. and guitars and everything so uh what does the rest of 2021 have for you um released music finally <laughs> i feel like that's been my number one goal um ever since 2014-15 so my my main goal right now is for the world to hear my voice and in doing so i have a, like i said a nine song project that i'll be releasing um so 
as long as I can get that out there to the world and who knows where, like I said, concerts are going to be, as long as I can share my voice, that's all I want. Yeah, absolutely. And, and where can uh, people find Live Strange? You can find me on Spotify. Um, like you said, is Live Strange. You can find me on YouTube Music. You can find me on Facebook as Live Strange, as well as Instagram, Live L I V underscore Strange, as well as TikTok. Okay, I'll, I'll follow you on TikTok because I'm really get, trying to get into the TikTok game, for lack of a better term. And, and I just followed you on Instagram today. So awesome. Yes, absolutely. And is there anything else that we covered a lot of ground here? And this is probably one of the more fun interviews I've ever done. So, oh, awesome. <laughs> is, and that's that's a lot considering um, our publication probably has 700, 800 interviews on there. Mm-hmm. Is there anything else that uh, you would like to add that we haven't talked about? Um, I would just say to everybody who's living in this crazy freaking world right now is be yourself because when you be yourself, you're the best that you can be for anybody else and yourself. So continue to be yourself and I will just absorb it all for you. Awesome. Well, Liv, you're a beautiful person and I want to thank you, you so much. I want to oh, thank you so thank much you for your time. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. And, um, is there a way I could do like you could do like a quick tagline, uh, like to introduce the podcast if I type it in the chat. Okay. Um, give me an example. Like I, I'm not used to this. All right. I'll type it in the chat and you can ad lib if you want. Okay. And obviously I'll cut this part out of the interview. Otherwise it's going to be really awkward. <laughs> okay. That's fine. This is live strange. is live strange and i'm here to haunt you gently nice (laughs) (laughs) all right there you go okay um this is live strange and we're creating madness with madness to creation that was really good. You're a pro. Great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, let, let's uh, chat again if you want. Oh, please. I would love that. Awesome. Awesome. I would love that too. So you take care and um, hopefully you guys won't be locked down in California too much longer. Oh God, me too. I mean, yeah. we can only hope. So we'll see. I hope you stay safe though. And thank you so much for having me on. Absolutely. And, and please reach out if like, if you need someone to talk to or something like that. Oh, most definitely. I always need somebody to talk to. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Um, I followed you on Instagram. So my Instagram is madness creation. So just, um, reach out. So. Yay. All right. Peace and love. Peace and love. Take care. All right. Bye. Bye.